Brain Simulator 2, an alternative learning approach. In this video, I'll describe the unique learning module that I've written for the Brain Simulator 2 project. It's different from most machine learning, so I think you'll find it an interesting alternative to backpropagation. For AGI, we'll need the ability to learn new things with speed and accuracy. The huge training sets needed for deep learning are great for big data correlation tasks, but obviously don't fit with human-like learning. Consider this. We all know the alphabet, but let's imagine a few new characters. And let's give these some names. Let's call them Ra, La, Da, and Ua, corresponding to the right, left, down, and up arrows. What character is this? Can you remember its name? Ra? How many training samples did I give you? And how many repetitions did it take? What kind of accuracy can you achieve? This video describes the module I've written to learn in an instance like this. If you're new to the Brain Simulator, you may wish to watch some of the other videos on the Future AI channel for details on the spiking neuron model and the way the software modules can interact. This video sort of starts in the middle. So let's consider when you were three years old, you could see objects and hear words, but how to relate the words to your visual input. Here is the Brain Simulator Associative Learning Module. The input columns are on the left and right sides and the outputs are in the column next to the inputs. Let's assume that on the left side we have visual inputs and on the right words. I've added some columns and put some labels on the outside neurons to give some possible context, but of course these are just arbitrary bits, so they could represent anything. Initially, the module is not connected internally, so firing any of the input neurons individually has no effect. But let's fire some neurons at nearly the same time. Now synaptic connections are created between the firing neurons, and after just a single instance of concurrent firing, the two inputs are associated. Now if I fire one neuron labeled square, the corresponding output fires. And the connection is two-way. I can also see the synaptic connections which were created. Well, what about ambiguous inputs? Suppose you see a blue circle and hear the words blue and circle. How do you know which word is associated with which attribute? Showing this is a bit more complex and it is tedious and error prone to train the network by firing individual neurons by hand, so I have a module which allows the firing of any neuron in the network based on its label. Each line in this text file represents a cycle of the neuron engine, so in this file the first cycle fires the blue and circle neurons in the visual module, and the next line fires the blue and circle neurons in the word module. Now when I run the complete training file, it fires the neurons and the module can train itself. With just these four training samples, I can fully train this little network with synapses representing the firing data. The two square neurons are associated and likewise the two circle, red, and blue neurons are connected. If the training data had included errors, additional samples would be required, but eventually it would learn. What is the algorithm? For each concurrent firing, the synaptic weight between the input and its associated output is increased. And for each non-concurrent firing, the weight is fractionally decreased. The negative delta of 0.2 was chosen experimentally. Rather than normalizing the synaptic weights to be correct within the context of the neuron model, I have customized the neuron model for those columns, so these neurons stimulate the target with the greatest synaptic weight. Essentially, the synaptic weight stores the raw concurrency information, and the input neuron model evaluates the data when it fires. How does the network know when it's being trained? 
Simple. If there are neurons firing on both the right and left input columns, then it is learning, adjusting synaptic values. If only one column is active, then it is retrieving learned data. When the network is not learning, the retrieval is handled completely by the neuron engine. The entire learning algorithm is bypassed. Why are the inputs and outputs in separate neuron columns? Conceptually, if you hear a word as input, this is significantly different from speaking a word as output. Likewise, seeing a blue circle is different from imagining one if you were to hear the words. On a more practical level, I've found that allocating extra neurons makes a network much easier to design and debug. And further, if inputs and outputs are represented by the same neurons, I found that feedback loops often form which prevent correct operation of the network. But what about concurrency? What do I mean by neurons firing at the same time? In the real world, you may be shown an object and not hear the associated word for several seconds. To address this, I have added an array which records the last time each relevant neuron spiked, either in neuron engine cycles or in wall clock time. Now, when asking if a neuron fired rather than considering its instantaneous spiking state, a neuron is considered to have fired if it has spiked within the past n cycles or the past n seconds. Model cycles are more convenient for testing and debugging, while wall clock time would be better for actual operation. So the system I've presented so far is somewhat related to Hebbian learning, which is loosely stated as neurons which fire together wire together. Hebbian learning isn't used much in AI because it has a few shortcomings which I have avoided. These two equations are usually given to represent Hebbian learning. Although Donald Hebb was a psychologist and made his observations from biological spiking neurons, these equations apply to a continuous perceptron model and don't seem to make a lot of sense in a spiking environment when we're talking about the temporal relationship between neuron firings, information which isn't really included in these equations. One concern about Hebbian learning is that in a traditional machine learning environment, the weights of Hebbian neurons may never converge. The model I am using doesn't need to converge. The synapse weights are just a representation of the raw congruent spiking data. When retrieving the data, a firing neuron could use any algorithm to determine the most likely correct output. In this instance, I simply select the output which has fired the most often for this input, but not for others. The model so far can create one-to-one -one relationships, but what about many-to-one? As an example, what about red and blue simultaneous visual inputs representing a unique word, purple? To handle this learning, I make use of another column of neurons as a hidden layer. After running the training, the neuron fires the purple word output when red and blue visual inputs are received. The network can still recognize red and blue individually. If the purple output fires, it suppresses the output of the individual red and blue output. Stimulating the purple word will still fire the red and blue visual, so you might imagine a visual of red plus blue whenever you hear the word purple. I built this functionality to be only one direction because it seemed practical in the current context. Also, I wanted to keep this as simple as possible because this represents the learning front end to a knowledge graph and it is the graph which will relate multiple attributes to their conceptual objects, both visually and verbally. That's going to be a topic for another video. As always, please take the time to like and subscribe to the Future AI YouTube channel. Comments and questions are always welcome. For more on this timely topic, read my new book, Will Computers Revolt? Preparing for the Future of Artificial Intelligence. Available now at Amazon and book retailers worldwide in paperback, hardcover, and ebook editions.